Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and in today's video I'm going to be going over the current state of General Motors because they're in a pretty interesting position here within the US market. Before we get in this video though, as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And then if you're gonna see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's get into it. So obviously since quarter one of 2023 is over, we are getting all these sales reports from different automakers. And it's interesting to see the winners and the losers. And I would definitely say that General Motors is in the category of winners for the most part. I will talk about some things that I think that they could change to improve their situation even better, but they're already doing really well. So in quarter one, they sold almost 600,000 cars. Now this is actually an 18% increase year over year. However, compared to pre-pandemic levels, this is still pretty low. Prior to the pandemic, General Motors was selling, you know, usually between about like 650 and sometimes even like 700,000 cars uh, in the first quarter of the year. And so again, they, they are improving, um, but they're still not where, you know, they used to be. Now, in terms of their actual brand split up, what things looked like, um, Chevrolet had a huge increase, 16% um, year over year. They sold almost 400,000 cars. Again, that's still below pre-pandemic levels, but really strong. Um, the vehicle that Chevrolet actually had that did the best, funny enough, was the Trailblazer. It had a 225% increase in sales. Tahoe and Traverse also did really well. The pickup truck did not fare so well. It still increased by 4%, which is actually pretty fantastic because if you look at Ram, for example, their pickup truck sales are down year over year. And so Chevy going up in sales, right, that's definitely a big improvement. Um, but only posting a 4% increase is pretty interesting when the rest of the brand, you know, has an average increase of 16%. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later in the video. And then when it comes to Buick, which is another brand, um, they sold just under 40,000 cars. They had a huge increase because Buick basically didn't sell any cars in 2020. Two, um, but the thing that's interesting to note is although they're doing better here in the US, in the Chinese market, their sales figures are actually down quite substantially. And so it'll be interesting to see what exactly happens with the brand. Um, Cadillac had a sales increase of 29%. Cadillac selling as many cars as Buick at this point. Uh, again, almost 40,000 units, which is actually higher than what they were at prior to the pandemic. So it just shows the rise of Cadillac as a brand. And then the next brand is going to be GMC. They had an 8% increase. Now, if you actually look at the sales figures with GMC over the course of the pandemic, they pretty much sold about the same amount of cars every single year. They didn't have the decreases that you saw with Cadillac and with Buick and with Chevrolet. Uh, and so that's why their sales increase isn't as much, um, but I mean, they still went up. And so when you put this all together, GM now holds a 16.7% market share here in the US, which makes them, the largest automaker here in the US. They're bigger than Ford, they're bigger than Stellantis, they are bigger than Toyota. And if you're wondering in terms of the breakdown of this, um, Chevrolet it accounts for 11% of um, the US market share, and then GMC, 3.7%, and then Buick, 1.1%, and then Cadillac is 1%. So like I said, Cadillac is pretty much as big as Buick when it comes to their overall volume. Now, a few more figures we need to dive into before I explain why this is happening is going to be GM's average transaction price um, across the board and then also by each brand. So their average transaction price is just over $51,000. Now, when you actually break it up into the individual brands, it's quite fascinating. So GMC has an average transaction price of over $62,000, whereas Chevrolet is just over $47,000. Cadillac is just over $70,000. And Buick is just over or just sorry just under thirty nine thousand dollars so buicks are actually the most affordable of gm's brands and so as you can see you know average transaction price is over fifty thousand dollars that's pretty much right in line with the average brand new car it's a little bit more expensive but it's it's pretty much in line and then the next thing is their incentive spending um so quarter one it was just under two thousand dollars now if you're wondering that's 
more than what we saw during you know a lot of the pandemic, but that's substantially less compared to what we saw prior to the pandemic. I mean, most of the brands were spending on average you know five to maybe six thousand dollars per vehicle in incentive spend prior to the pandemic. So spending less than two thousand dollars, you can see that this is making it so GM is you know obviously going to be more profitable because they're not having to discount vehicles as much as what they used to have to do. So now let's talk about why General Motors is in this position where they are the number one automaker and what the future most likely holds for General Motors. So first off, in terms of their number one position, it depends on which brand you look at. So from the perspective of Buick, well, Buick was doing really bad in 2022, and so they're pretty much only able to go up from here. And again, if you look at their sales figures, they're selling significantly fewer cars compared to prior to the pandemic. And so I think the reason why Buick is doing so well as well. Again, they were like at rock bottom last year. And on top of that, if you look at their average transaction price, the average Buick is actually really affordable. And there's a lot of people that just want affordable cars. And so there's a lot of people that are going and buying Buick because they're affordable and you know that you get a lot of features for the money with that brand. Now, when it comes to GMC, again, this is the brand that was the most stable over the course of the pandemic. I think that GMC has done a really good job with rebranding themselves as like a premium type brand. Again, prior to the pandemic, a lot of people just looked at GMCs as just rebadged Chevys, right? And that's kind of what they were. Whereas now with stuff like the new Denali Ultimate package and you know the AT4X package and some other packages that they have on their vehicles, they've done a really good job of just rebranding GMC and making it appeal to a higher income demographic that had money throughout the pandemic and still has money. And so that's why they're able to sell so many of these vehicles. And then you'd go over to Cadillac and it's a similar situation, except they obviously appeal to an even more, I guess, wealthy demographic, right? With the Escalade, for example, you know, the CT5 and CT4 V cars as well. They've just got a lot of really cool product that, again, wealthier buyers like. And so they're able to tap into that market and they're doing really well with it. The Escalade V, that's another really good example of a vehicle that is just super hot with those wealthier buyers. And then when you dive into Chevrolet, it's somewhat similar to the Buick situation where Chevy still sells a lot of affordable cars. You have the Trailblazer, which again has done amazingly well when it comes to sales. Uh, the Equinox is actually down in sales right now. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why that is happening. Um, that, that'll be one where I'll have to kind of dive a little bit deeper into it. Um, but you know, the Traverse is doing really well because again, when you compare the Traverse to its competitors, it offers a lot of features at a very reasonable price point, again, compared to the competition. And so you can see that GMs basically set themselves up where they have brands that appeal to the people that have lots of money that are still purchasing cars like crazy. And they also appeal to people that don't have a lot of money that are just, you know, super like budget conscious. And so since they're able to apply to both of those demographics in today's market, that allows them to get a much larger market share. It's pretty genius. And so before we dive into what this means for GM moving forward, I quickly want to talk about the whole pickup truck situation, because again, when you go through the numbers, GM did sell more pickup pickup trucks year over year, but that was kind of like a smaller increase compared to what you saw with their other vehicles. And I think this is happening for a number of reasons. So first off, the full-size pickup truck market is definitely softened quite a bit. I mean, Ram is in the hole by a substantial margin. Like they aren't selling nearly as many pickup trucks this year as they did last year. And Ford is also struggling to sell trucks as well. And a big part of that, frankly, has been the price increases. Now, I do want to give GM a little bit of a pat on the back because I feel like they've been more reasonable with their price increases than Ford and Ram. And I want to give you some real Real world examples that I have seen as I've been reviewing cars. So at the top end of things, if you look at like a fully loaded Ram 3500 Limited or an F350 Limited, you're going to be looking at a price tag like as equipped as what dealers actually order of $110,000, $115,000 all day long. Whereas if you look at a GMC Sierra 3500 Denali Ultimate, which competes with those trucks on every single front, and you know, in some ways, I think that it's actually a better pickup truck. And those trucks sticker for under $100,000, still an expensive vehicle, but you can see that GM is substantially more affordable than the competition. And then when you look at pickup trucks within their other segments, it's a similar situation. Their Halo pickup truck, the Silverado ZR2 and GMC Sierra AT4X are substantially more affordable than Ram T-Rex and Ford Raptor. Now, yes, those pickup trucks don't technically compete against the Raptor and T-Rex because they're kind of in a segment below, but still they're the top of the line off-roaders that GM has right now. Right now and they're again 
more affordable. And if you look at, you know, Chevy Trail Boss, for example, or GMC Sierra AT4, and you compare it to, you know, Ford Tremor or Ram Rebel, again, what you're going to find is option to option, the GM trucks are going to be more affordable. And so I think that that's why GM has had year over year increases with pickup trucks, whereas the other two manufacturers are definitely struggling, especially Ram. But what I will say is if GM really wants to gain like a lot of market share in this segment, I think that, you know, undercutting even more would definitely do a lot for them because the buyers that typically buy these pickup trucks are completely tapped out based on affordability. And so if GM could at least improve affordability on the low end of things, so your entry level and mid-level pickup trucks, so think, you know, your custom trail boss, your regular custom, you know, your LTs and maybe even the LTZs, if they could bring those prices down a little bit, still keep the prices for the, you know, the high countries and the ZR2s and the Denali Ultimates, keep those where they are. I think that would definitely help them sell a lot more vehicles. Now, is that going to be the most profitable move? I don't know, but let me know what you think on that thing. So moving forward, I think that GM is going to continue to retain the title of the largest automaker here in the US throughout the 2023 sales year because all of the other automakers that would have a chance at attacking GM all have things that are going against them that GM is currently navigating around and able to figure out. So First off is Toyota, right? Toyota is a huge manufacturer. And well, GM was obviously dealing with production issues last year, but now it seems like they're able to produce whatever they want. Toyota is not in that situation. They're still not able to produce enough cars. So until Toyota can really ramp up production, they're not gonna be able to dethrone GM when it comes to market share. Uh, the next one would be Stellantis, right? They've got Dodge Ram, Jeep Chrysler, Alfa Romeo, Maserati. And again, they would have a really good chance at dethroning GM with all the different brands they have, especially with Jeep and with Ram. But the problem with Stellantis is they simply price themselves out of the market with some of their brands. Uh, again, Jeep and Ram, those are like the poster children for that. You look at those vehicles and right now they've got some pretty heavy incentives. I mean, dealers are discounting a lot of these vehicles like $10,000 plus off of MSRP because they have to, to bring the prices in line with what a lot of other manufacturers have their MSRP prices at. It's, it's pretty crazy the price increases that that company has released. But yeah, until that company really like brings their prices in line and people realize that their vehicles are, you know, finally priced similar to the competition, it's they're definitely going to continue to struggle and they're not going to be able to surpass GM. And then the next one would obviously be Ford. And Ford's in a similar situation to Stellantis. Now, Ford is not spending a huge amount and when it comes to incentives, they're kind of similar to GM where they're still pretty light with the incentive spend. But again, you look at the prices on Ford's and they're pretty crazy. Now, I feel like Ford, again, is in a similar situation to GM where their top of the line product, right, the Raptors and stuff, they don't need to decrease the prices on those because people will pay the prices on those. But their entry-level product and their mid-level product is too expensive. I mean, you look at like an XLT F-150 and they're like $65,000, the ones that you see at dealer lots. And that's just too much money for the consumer that's actually going to purchase that truck. And so I think that if Ford wanted a chance at dethroning GM and becoming the largest automaker here in the US, they need to just basically keep doing what they're doing with the top line product, right? And bring down the prices of the middle, line, middle of the line product so that it's in line with the customer base that's actually going to purchase that product because $65,000, that's like it's like rich dude money. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, rich dude's not going to purchase an XLT F-150. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about the whole GM situation. Do you think that they're going to continue to retain the title as number one automaker here in the US? Or do you think that someone's going to come in and swoop that from them? I'll see you.